Hello everyone. So in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at how you make a composite image using ArcGIS Pro. And once we have the composite image, then at that point, we're going to use some image analysis techniques to enhance the image. In a future video, what we can do is actually analyze that composite image. So let's get started. As you can see, I have ArcGIS Pro up already. In addition to that, I've already connected folders. So ArcGIS Pro right now is connected to my data folder where the imagery is going to reside. And as a matter of fact, we can take a quick look at that. If we take a look at the catalog pane and we look here in folders, we're going to notice that I've got some data here. And the data that I want is right here, Lab 3 composite imagery. And so this is all the data that we'll be looking at. And if you notice as we look at this data, I've got data from two different dates. I've got November 25th, 2017, and I also have December 27th, 2017. And with those two dates, I have seven bands of Landsat imagery. What are those seven bands of Landsat? Well, we can take a quick look at that. Here's the Landsat 8. This is how the bands work. So band one is 30 meter coastal aerosol. It's 0.435 micrometers to 0.451 micrometers. We also include band two, which is blue, band three, which is green, band four, which is red, five is near infrared, six is shortwave infrared, and then finally is seven, also shortwave infrared, but these shortwave infrareds are slightly different. We're going to be concentrating specifically on RGB when we make our composite image, but it's just simply good to know that that's what you have when you're dealing with composite imagery, especially Landsat imagery. You'll have multiple bands that go well beyond RGB. For this particular example that I'm using today, we're just going to use one of the dates. When we actually do the next video, which is going to be creating a burn index using composite imagery, then I'm going to look at both November and December. But until then, we're just going to concentrate on one set. Now, there are two different ways that we can actually make these composite images. I can take the data here, put it into the map, and then I can use the composite geoprocessing tool. It adds an extra step, though because the simplest way is to just create the composite directly and then directly add it to the map. And, and this is what I mean and I'll show you. So let me close the catalog pane. Now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the analysis plane, pane and click on tools. And from tools, we're gonna type in composite. And the first tool that pops up is composite bands. And so that's what I'm going to open. So now with my composite band tool, I can input roster and then I can create my output roster. So you'll notice I don't have anything here in my contents pane. So what I'm gonna do instead is click my folder. And once I click my folder, I can then open the folder that has my data. And remember, I've already connected ArcGIS Pro to my data, so it's gonna be easy to find. And the data that I'm looking for in this example is right here under composite. Now remember, I want the first seven bands because the first seven bands is going to represent that November 25th, 2017 imagery set that I want. So what I'm going to do, because I want these first seven bands, is to just click on Lab 3 Composite. That's my geo database. And when I click on that, then you can see that everything within that geo database is now going to show here up in this window. I want bands one through seven for November 25th, 2017. So I'm going to click on band one, hold the shift key, click on band seven. It's going to select everything. And now I'm going to say, okay. So now the input roster is going to populate with all the bands that I've just selected. Don't need to add any more. My output roster is given a title. If you want to see the pathway, you can just click on it and you can see that the pathway is here. It's going to be added this new roster composite image into my present project geo database that's been created because when I started this Ar ArcGIS Pro session, I just did new map and it automatically created a new geo database for me. Now, with that said, I'm not really a fan of this name. I'm gonna get rid of all this extraneous stuff and we're just gonna call this composite band. Keep in mind too, 
that your output roster name can only be a certain number of characters. If you get an error message, oftentimes it's just a simple changing of the name and that'll solve the problem. So I probably would have gotten an error with, error with such a long name, but this should be fine, just composite band. And now I'll click run. Okay, so that took longer <laughs> than I anticipated. But again, it has seven bands, and so that's one of the reasons why. So initially this was pending, then it ran through the process, but now I've got my composite bands. And again, you'll notice that this is my composite image of those seven images from Landsat 8. Now, this doesn't give me a ton of information. I mean, there's a lot of information in here, don't get me wrong, but it's hard to pull that information out visually by just looking at this seven band composite image. So I'm gonna close the geoprocessing window. And then what we wanna do is pull some information out of this because again, we have seven bands to work with. It is sort of cool here. We can see the coast of California and we can see some cloud layer. So that's interesting stuff. But what I want to do is just pull out RGB so we can take a look at a nice RGB image of this particular map. So I'm going to click on my imagery tab. Actually, I'm going to click on my roster layer tab. That's better. And then from roster layer, we're going to click on band combination. Now, in terms of band combination, there are a couple defaults. One is natural color, the other is color infrared. But you typically don't want to use natural color and color infrared unless you're really certain that the imagery that you're using, whether it's aerial imagery from an airplane or a drone or a satellite, matches the default bands that are found within ArcGIS Pro. So typically what I do is just custom. So I'll come down here and click custom. And remember, when we're dealing with Landsat 8, red is going to be, well, we can look back and review it really quickly. So take, let's take a look. So red is band 4, green is band 3, and blue is band 2. So we want 4, 3, 2. So again, red is going to be band 4, green is band 3, and then blue is band 2. And we're going to call this Natural Landsat. And then just click Add. Now when we take a look at the image, we're starting to see things a little bit better. We can see now that we've got more of a natural image, but it still isn't that great. So what we really want to do is pull out some more information and enhance this image a little bit better. So I'm going to come here and click on DRA. So DRA is a dynamic range adjustment. And it's hard to see on the video, but the, the imagery did get enhanced slightly. The challenge with DRA is it takes a look at all the pixels. So to be perfectly honest, a better DRA would probably mean that we would want to zoom into the image a little bit closer. But for now, this is okay. We're starting our enhancement process. Now, this still isn't the greatest. So what I want to do is resample my pixels a little bit. So I'm going to come down to resampling type. And now what I can do is choose a resampling um, process or a resampling type. My four choices are nearest neighbor, where I can assign a value from the closest cell, bilinear, which is interpolating values from four surrounding cells for that pixel, cubic is to interpolate values from the 16 surrounding cells, and then majority assigns the most popular value from the surrounding four cells. You want to experiment with your resampling, but I've found that bilinear tends to enhance the imagery a little bit better and you don't have information loss. You can really still see the image nicely. So experiment with this, but I usually go to bilinear. Now when we take a look at the image, once it pops back up, we can start to see that there's a little bit more enhancement. We can start to see a little bit more pulling of information here, shadows as well, and it becomes a little bit more contrasty. But this still isn't where I want to be. I still want to have a better image. So I'm going to stretch it a little bit. And with your stretch types, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possibilities with one of them being none. When we're doing a stretching of your pixels, what you're essentially doing is cutting off the stuff that's at the low or the high end. 
and you're really trying to enhance the majority of those pixels that are found within that curve. And so for me, I tend to work with percent clip and standard deviation. So if I use percent clip, I'm gonna cut off the highest and lowest values. If I use standard deviation, that's gonna display values between a specific number of standard deviations. And so let's try standard deviation first to see what the image looks like. Ah, standard deviation is pretty good. And again, you can start to see this landscape much nicer. You can see these clouds and you can see right on the coastline, we don't have that cloud layer. If I go back to stretch type and I try percent clip instead, let's take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, so standard deviation to me is better. And once again, we can experiment with other ones. You can do minimum, maximum. I don't like that either. Um, histogram equalization. And once again, just sort of have some fun experimenting with this. This histogram equalization is interesting. Um, that might be the best one, to be perfectly honest with you. I need to zoom in on this. This is new to me. I haven't used this one before. <laughs> but we're getting some interesting imagery here, which seems to show the variation on the landscape between gr ground cover and is doing it quite nicely. Let me go back now that we're zoomed in and go from histogram equalization, which is displaying values with histogram equalized, back to standard deviation. Yeah, you know what? I'm sort of liking this histogram equalization better because you can really see the Anza Borrega Desert nicer. And here's the Laguna Mountains and here's that dividing line. And again, we see a really nice contrast between the desert and the mountain. So I'm going to keep it here on that histogram equalization. Let me zoom out again a little bit. Okay, so that's it. So for this particular project so far, we've done a composite image. We've had seven bands of information from Landsat 8. From those seven bands, I created a composite image of red and green and blue. And then to enhance that image a little bit better, I first went to DRA to adjust the range a little bit. I then resampled the pixels to a bilinear. And then from that, I experimented with stretch type and I settled on my histogram equalization. I can say from experience that it depends on what you're after, but using different stretch types and resampling types to try to pull out the information you're most interested in is really going to be an art to a certain extent and it comes with some experience. Okay, so I'm going to stop this particular video and in the next video what we're going to do is take a look at that December information as well. We're going to put that into our map and then we're going to compare the two images because in November you'll notice that we don't have any fire here but in December, our December image is gonna be after a fire. And so what we're gonna do is use our composite image and create what's called a burn index. And we'll be able to explore this composite imagery a little bit further. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it. And again, the next video will be doing the burn index and I'll provide a link to that video when it's all done in the comment section below. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.